When it comes to starting a farm, one thing that attracts a lot of people into farming is the romanticism of old barns just like this one. But that can be a dangerous move following the romanticism of it all. This video is all about one thing I wish every business owner, farm based or not, knew before they started a business. Stay tuned for that coming up in this one. One thing I think people can easily fall in love with is the romanticism of farming. Barns like that are things that pull people into this space. You dream about the cattle on the hills, the sheep in the pastures, the early mornings. That's how we, a lot of us at least, want to raise our kids, want to wake up, have our coffee doing that. That's how we want to retire in life. But if you just get pulled into this space off that romanticism, you're probably lining yourself up for a huge smack of reality because farming can be hard. One thing I want to stress is know why you're really getting into this. If it's only for the romanticism of farming, I would say check yourself before you wreck yourself because that can be dangerous. This romantic lifestyle can easily be achieved without starting a farm-based business. What you got to realize, if you're coming to chase that lifestyle, it's probably not going to be the lifestyle that you envision when you get there. Sure, it'll be great, but it's gonna be a hell of a lot of work. From really famous farmers like Joel Salatin to other people I've met on this trip that I'm on, that's the stories that I hear. Yeah, the lifestyle is great, but it's a hell of a lot of work. There's a hell of a lot of trade-offs and there's a lot of sacrifices to make it happen. One key to making it happen knowing that is know why you're really getting into it. If it's for the romantic lifestyle, well look, you can live that romantic farm lifestyle while working your corporate job or doing something else on the side. You can have the hobby farm, the homestead. You don't necessarily need to make the farm cash flow to live the lifestyle. If you want the lifestyle, create the lifestyle. If you want something more, the lifestyle and a business, then you really got to approach it as a business. That means knowing why you're really doing it. If it's for business, you gotta run it like a business. And all parties involved need to know that. That means you, your spouse, business partners, parents, anybody else involved in this operation needs to be on the same page. If you're the gung-ho person who wants to do this and your wife's like, hell no, I don't wanna do it, odds are it ain't gonna work and you're probably gonna end up divorced. I know people who that's happened to and it's been eerie how many stories I've heard on this trip about divorced families who just got divorced over doing this thing. If you're not both on the same page, it's gonna make a really hard go of it. So when you do sit down to talk to your significant other or partner about this and getting into this, make sure you're on the same page for where you wanna go if that's a business, if that's a homestead, if it's chasing a better life for your kids. All those things are great, all those are fine. Make sure you frame everything that you do around those. Create the conditions for those to happen. Don't set out to have a lifestyle and then you realize you have to run it as a business and you're pissed that the lifestyle that you really wanted gets sacrificed because you have to do it as a business. There's a mismatch there. If you want the lifestyle, create the lifestyle. If you want to do it as a business, you're going after the business and you're going to have to do some sacrificing on the lifestyle side of things. This can be very dangerous and on this trip I visited seven different farms and each one of these people are doing it for a different reason. Some people want to help their parents, some people want to return to their roots, some people are doing it as a business to support their family, some people are doing it for fun, some people are doing it to raise their own food. There's a lot of reasons to get into this. There's a lot of reasons to homestead, to farmstead, or to farm. Just make sure you know why you're doing it initially and make sure you put in turn and make sure at that time you put in place a plan of action that lines up with those goals. Don't go for the mismatch, make sure everybody's on the same page, and hopefully, even if that thing that you're trying to do doesn't work, you'll make it through as a unit together. That's what's important at the end of the day. Farms can fail, businesses can fail, homesteads can fail. They can always be rebuilt in the future. Marriages that fall apart, families that fall apart, those are a lot harder to rebuild. Those things come first, which means taking time before you do any of this to sit down with people, know why you're doing this, where you're going, and make sure everybody's on the same page. It's critically important, and that's why it's a huge focus of the Farm Business Essentials Workshop that Darby and I do. It's something I've had a lot of stress with in my relationship when I started a business around the conference years ago 
was facing this challenge of trying to maintain a business and a relationship at the same time, when me and my wife, I think, were on very different pages. Take it from somebody like me who has struggled. Don't go down this path unless you have these hard conversations. They're not easy and dreams may get shattered, but it's better that they get shattered on the front end versus getting shattered on the back end along with everything else. Trust me on it. That's what's worth it. All this stuff, it's not worth it. The relationships are. If you want to learn more about this type of subject matter from holistic context to lifestyle to farming to business, be sure to check out the podcast that Darby and I do, Grass-Fed Life. We try and tackle all the hardcore subjects around farming, from how you make it work with your spouse and significant other, to how you get financing, to some of the production stuff out there. We try and cover it all. A link to that below. That's all for this one. Thanks for watching. Until next time, be nice, be thankful, and do the work.